Welcome back. It's Lesson 18, Issues Within Democratic Systems, and today's lesson will be focusing on the U.S. Civil Rights Movement. But first, we're taking a, a step backwards, and you can see the Bill of Rights. We have an illustration here of what the Bill of Rights are. Now, it is important to note that although all ten of them are important in and of themselves in terms of historical context, the first and the fourth amendments would be the ones that are most often connected to the content that we study in Social 30. Another thing that we have here for you to look at is a massive Prezi that I share with my grade 10s and my grade 12s. And if you haven't had me in grade 10 before, you may want to take a look at it. What this Prezi is, is a look at the concept of human rights. So what are human rights? There's an embedded video that's about nine minutes long. And then it goes into how are human rights safeguarded in the United States? There's some videos about the Bill of Rights. And then it looks at the Bill of Rights and the language within it. And it also looks at the Canadian Charter. And it's this section right here that I think is critical to your essay building. That the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms guarantees the rights and freedoms set out in it subject only to such reasonable limits prescribed by law as can be done demonstrably justified in a free and democratic society. So what I'd like you to be able to do is go through the Canadian Charter and say, when would it be reasonable to take away the freedom of expression? Maybe during wartime we censor, right? During wartime we don't want soldiers sharing uh, information that could be caught and used against our soldiers and put millions of lives at risk. What about democratic rights? Every citizen should have the right to vote. Well, could some citizens lose the right to vote? Maybe they've committed crimes during elections. Issues like mobility rights. Do we ever have circumstances where we say, well, normally Canadians have mobility rights, but we don't want this person moving freely among us? So, I'd like you to be able to look at the Canadian Charter Rights and Freedoms and look at ideas like detention and imprisonment. Everyone has the right not to be arbitrarily detained or imprisoned and try to come up with either hypothetical or contemporary or historical examples of when people did lose those rights and when it may have been justified. We're also looking at the evolution of liberty and the idea that some things have changed and that is what liberalism is. So within the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms, we're looking at the language that allows things to change. In the United States, one of the big, one of the big um, bills that they have is, or, or rights that they have, is the right to bear arms. And we're going to need to be able to dissect information like the cartoon shown here and see, you know, what is the ideological perspective of the cartoonist with regards to the right to bear arms. There's a video that I've embedded about the Castle Doctrine that is quite disturbing, but it will give you some case studies that you can use to talk about human rights. Unfortunately, not everywhere in the world has the same amount of human rights that we do. So there is a video here about human rights, including the USA Patriot Act and how it is a threat to the Bill of Rights and, and the U.S. Charter, or the U.S. Constitution, sorry. And uh, yeah, that's a good first step. We also have another video. Uh, this one's from Mr. Lucina in Edmonton. It's a PowerPoint specifically about the Second Amendment and the right to bear arms. It's going to be referencing some of the many um, unfortunate mass shooting incidents in the United States. We also have some connections to Canadian gun control, and we have some connections to other violent crimes in Canadian history. Thomas Jefferson, when the government fears the people, there is liberty. When the people fear the government, there is tyranny. So it is important to collect some quotes so that you can further unpack the ideological perspective of a source by connecting it to a related concept. And quotes like Jefferson's there could be important to pushing you up to 80 or beyond in terms of your essay writing. It's nice to have some historical, theoretical or in this case, um, American case studies that really highlight the relationship between government and government. There's a three-minute video from TED Talk that talks about the Bill of Rights, if you still don't get it. 
No civilization worth the name can justify the subjection of women, nor can it afford to do so if it wishes to remain strong. So we will be talking about uh, women's rights in a future lesson, but there's some, be some thoughts here to get that process started for sure. Uh, civil disobedience was talked about in the last lesson, and Henry David Thoreau um, has some great quotes about it. That all men recognize the right to revolution, that is, the right to refuse allegiance to and resist the government when its tyranny or its inefficiency are great and unendurable. Any man more right than his neighbors constitutes a majority of one already. So we have the muckrakers of the progressive era, including the president, President Theodore Roosevelt, who investigated all that was wrong with classic liberalism. We have within the idea of liberalism the idea of fluidity, and one of the in your generation, one of the things that we're seeing um, fluidity and, and liberalism define is gender. Uh, in the future, fluidity no doubt will be used to define other identifiable characteristics. Here's the concept of plurality and tolerance in the Quebec model of immigration and some links to that. Before I give you the main assignment, which is to create a timeline activity to civil rights, I've given you some notes on civil rights. So. Uh, in the end, the, the, the big assignment here for, for this week, and by week I mean day because summer school every, every day is a week, um, is to create a civil rights movement timeline. And I do have some essential notes here to begin with. Um, but I also wanted to add to these essential notes, and I wanted to give you some specific things that could uh, maybe shine, sh shine some light in some directions that's not normally... So we have a Prezi or two here to get started. I really want you to get started historically back with the Civil War amendments, uh, the 13th, 14th, and 15th that collectively helped to outlaw slavery. That's an important step in terms of the civil rights movement, I would argue. We also want you to understand who was Jim Crow and what are Jim Crow laws, including its connection with Plessy versus Ferguson and the concept of separate but equal, and the good work done in the beginning by the NAACP, the related idea of affirmative action. We have some of the issues with segregation as shown here, and a plea to the United States. The world must be made safe for democracy, but at the same time, even the United States wasn't, wasn't safe. So there is a paradox within segregation that the United States is exporting you know, it's system that they're seeing as superior, but even within the United States, there were people struggling. We fought to make the world safe for democracy and America safe for the Negro. And Mr. Wilson, after World War I, um, was not necessarily um, ready to make African Americans equal. We have Brown versus the Board of Education. We have the Birmingham, Alabama um, anti African American um, desegregation of schools, and we have some connections with civil rights today. So, uh, what I would suggest that you do then is to take a look at all of these great sources that I have here. There's another 15, sorry, there's another 19 pages. See if you can understand them and dissect them in terms of an A1, but also add to the uh, timeline that I got started there for you and, and add things like the Jim Crow laws, Plessy versus Ferguson, so that when you need to talk about the evolution of liberalism, you can specifically relate to the U.S. civil rights movement. Thank you very much.